Welcome back to another Drag Race Quick Bite. I'm Jack, and this week is the reunion, and I don't think I can make a full video on it. I love the reunions when they're actually reunions, but I don't think I could talk about the reunions and make it interesting because I could just be saying, oh, they said this, I thought this was cool. Like, it just doesn't seem that interesting for a video. So in its place, I'm gonna do the best and worst of mid-season songs on Drag Race. But I guess I'll tell you my favorite reunion is season nine because of Valentina, and my least favorite is season 10 because of the way everything was handled with the Vixen. Season 9 was entertainment while season 10 was just mean-spirited. Mid-season songs on Drag Race have the ability to be some of the best moments on the show, even better than the finale songs. Oftentimes I've seen with these mid-season songs is that they're a lot more fun or there's a lot more theming to it, which I think is a lot better because for a finale song, it's like, okay, you're capping off a whole season with a theming of a super queen, but for a mid-season one, it makes sense to be like by flop. You know what I mean? I think the songs that happen in the mid-season are way more of a challenge, so you have to like characterize while a cap off to the season for the finale should really be your brand. So I'm way more lenient on the songs if they're about breaking up or being in love or having a bad boy baby because the challenge makes more sense for this point in the season. The same rules apply as last time so if you haven't seen that video go check it out and while you're thinking about my channel go subscribe small percentage blah 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 blah. I'm working really hard to 50k so if you guys would love to subscribe that would be amazing. And comment and like for the algorithm let's get started. I'm gonna alternate between the five best and the five worst of the mid-season songs, so let's start off with the worst. Like I always say, worst is just hyperbolic. It gets people to click on the video, but none of these songs are actually bad. I don't have that much hatred for BDE, but living up to series two song was a big, tall order. I found the concept of them having two versions of the song with different tempos really interesting, and I think it could have worked better, but I just, the, where, where it gets me is the verses weren't that strong. There was one standout in River who I think could have won the challenge by herself, but giving all the queens the win was a good option too. And all the girls on the Faster Tempo song did good, but none of their verses were that memorable. It felt like the girls on the Faster Tempo song just expected to win because their song is more standard drag race, so they went for verses that were way more standard as well, while the girls on the Slower Tempo song really met the criteria of talking about BDE and being empowering. I love a good bitch track just as much as the next person, but but I think that the slower tempo song showed us what the challenge was really about, and I just enjoyed it a lot more. But even then, I don't really like the verses on the slower tempo one. I just think that on paper they're great, but only River really stood out. So that's why it's ultimately here. There was one great verse, but the rest just didn't really hit me in the way that I think it should have. I think overall it was a great episode because we had the underdogs climb their way to the top with a song that wasn't really standard drag race, but overall it just wasn't a great product. And Cheryl did a death drop. <laughs> <laughs> you shitty bitch. Coming in at the number five best, I think this one might be a little controversial, but I'm going to defend myself. It is Break Up Bye Bye from UK Series 1. The Frock Destroyers are iconic, don't get me wrong. I just think that there's better songs in the Drag Race franchise now, and while this really set the foundation for what a really good girl group song could be, there's just better options. It comes down to Cheryl's group not being that strong outside of her, and the fact that even though it's called Break Up Bye Bye, basically talking about breaking up, all of them just did kind of bitch track numbers, which is great, they were iconic, but when you think about the actual context of the song, it's like three verses that don't fit with the chorus. But you can't deny that the performances that stood out are still iconic today, and the chorus actually sounds very high quality, something that I could even hear on the radio. It set the bar high and showed what a really good mid-season song could be, but that bar has been passed by all four of the other songs on this list. Coming at number four for the worst, I feel so bad because whenever I talk about Canada's Drag Race Season 2 on my channel, it seems to be negative, but I, I promise you Canada's Drag Race Season 2 is a good season. I just don't really enjoy By Flop that much. Queen of the North is great. I forgot to talk about that in my last video, but By Flop is just not my favorite follow-up to both You Wear It Well and Not Sorry About It. I think it comes down to the fact that they were kind of doing a pseudo country pop number and it just doesn't really sound that great in my ears. All the girls really understood the assignment and wrote verses that were fun, but you know, <laughs> you have Kendall Gender who did great on Queen of the North, but here, um, oh boy. 
There's no verse on these songs that really bring me back outside of Cynthia's, but Cynthia's comes so late, I'm like, is there even a point to listen when I could just listen to something else? And I think that the chorus just gets a little too repetitive, and again, I have the vocals on the chorus, no shade to the person who recorded them, but again, it's going for this pseudo country thing with such fake twain on it, and it bugs me so much. I don't love country, but growing up in California with a bunch of people who fake country accents, Oh my god, when they, when they sing their country songs and put that fake twain on it, you know when someone is forcing it. Neither BDE nor this song are bad cast songs, I just think that they lack memorability in a time where the cast songs were getting really, really good, but I don't think these two compare to the next three on the list. My dry ass pussy is seven cool crap. The number 4 best, I have Queens Down Under from Down Under Season 1. This is the only positive thing I could say about Down Under Season 1. Both of these songs go so hard. They have a stupid little funky beat, a chorus by Michelle Visage, and all of the verses were really great. Even the Queen Eliminated Coco Jumbo had a verse that, though wasn't as up to par as the rest, I still think it's a very, very quality verse. If we're talking about the actual worst verse of the song, um... <laughs> My only negative to these songs is that the chorus does repeat itself a lot, and though it's catchy and Michelle Visage does a great job, I think that without the variation, the songs can kind of flatline after a while. But talk about stiff competition. Both Kida and Anita both gave some of the best verses of the franchise. The amount of times that I say quirky kooky kit quick and keen hashtag team ketamine in my head, oh my god. <laughs> The whole song from the chorus to the verses just catches in your ear and it will get stuck in your head for days. I just wish we got this quality of a song at the end instead of I'm a Winner Baby. Coming in at the number 3 worst, I have You Don't Know Me. To me, I don't think this song is bad, I think it's still pretty quality, good mixing and everything, but it is just so out of left field for what Drag Race songs are. I think it's a cute introduction, but when you're coming off the heels of I'm that bitch, and then you get this, it just feels like some of the girls were really screwed over where their talents could have lied in something else. I think someone like Dahlia would have been great on a bitch track, but she was stuck in a Fosse number, which was great for someone like Jan, but not great for someone like Dahlia. And while some queens like Jada and Jan really tried to find a flow to the plucky strings in the background, other queens like Aiden, Rockham, and Dahlia, while entertaining, didn't really have a lot there to fill up the dead space so it just kind of came off as boring at parts. The theming was a really good idea for an introduction and they gave them the seconds to actually make that introduction so that's the best part about this song. I just don't come back to it very often because it kind of slows down in parts and it's just so non-drag racy. Coming in at the number 3 best, I have Phenomenon from season 13. The whole framing of the episode was having the loser circle come in second, but then they just had a better song than the winner circle, which I'll get to later. There is just not a bad verse on the song, and though the RuPaul chorus can get a little repetitive, I think it's still entertaining, and all of the verses just keep me so invested. You could tell me a quote from every single one of these verses because it just sticks in your head. You know, Denali being icy and spicy, Joey being a gay ass bitch, <laughs> Kimora being from the House of Hall, Rose being a pretty witty fashion clown, Tamisha Aman coming for you, oh my god, like, come on, and Utica wiggling to the top. All of them are just so iconic, guys. And I'm no music major, I mean, I called brass in the last video horns, which I, I don't even know why I did that, but the beat in the background just kind of pushes the song forward, where something like Congratulations, that beat kind of swallowed the girls and like, oh, uh, it made a really weird vibe. Just something about the Phenomenon beat is just so energetic and so fun to come back to. It was on my Spotify rap for last year, and I think it's just one of the most high quality songs of the entire franchise. This is, this is probably the whitest person I've ever seen yeah. in my life. Coming in at number 2 for the worst, I have I'm In Love from All Stars 5. The concept is really fun, I think it leaves room for a lot of stupid choices like Hannibal Lecter or Mr. Rogers, but the biggest issue is that they gave them absolutely no time. I don't know how the judges can sit there and say that one verse is better than another when they literally had like 10 seconds to get their jokes out there. 
People may say, oh, it's part of the challenge to fit your lyrics in there, but I don't think that's a valid criticism because what other place are these girls going to be restricted on writing lyrics outside of the show? If they write their own songs, of course they'll have the time, or if they're featuring on a verse, they'll probably have more time than 10 f***ing seconds. It was just so sporadic basically having three verses over the course of 30 seconds and then immediately going into a chorus just as long and then going into the next group, like there's the pacing is just so off. A lot of people do look back on this song pretty fondly because of the chorus, and I do understand that. I think the chorus is really catchy. But when the catchy chorus is the majority of the song, I can't really call the song good because we don't get to hear a lot about the queens who are actually the ones getting critiqued. Again, I think it's a great idea for a challenge, but I never come back and listen to it because by the time I get into one verse, the next one is already starting. This pick might be a little controversial for me to say, so let me know. I might just have my All Stars 5 bias against this like I did with Clapback. Coming in at number two for the best, I have I'm That Bitch from season 12. If Breakup Bye Bye set the foundation for girl group songs, I think that I'm That Bitch set the foundation for early cast songs. I started to watch season 12 with a group of friends who wanted to see the show and they weren't really expecting much from the song but as soon as Britta opened they were like oh my god wait this is actually pretty great. It is quintessential bitch track with some of the best verses of the show, some of the best coherence of the show, oh it's just so good. All of the girls really put on that bad bitch persona but they still did it in the way that's signature to their brand. Someone like Crystal Method was known for being the kooky queen who was really nice but she got on the track and gave it personality and made that power happen. Happen. Something that I don't think is in a lot of Drag Race songs is the amount of ad-libs that they shove into this, and I don't think that's a bad thing. Nicki Minaj was there, and they had to do a rap verse for her, so obviously they are going to try their hardest to make it sound good. So when someone is rapping and they throw in a little ad-lib, it's fun, and it really feels like a really high quality song. Something that this song avoids too that I think my least favorite song kind of falls into is the fact that though it's a bitch track, none of the girls are really trying to overshadow each other. All of them are just kind of trying to do their own thing, even someone like Britta who is really confident, it comes off as like a performance confident, not like I'm trying to outdo my sisters. You listen to the verses and you're like, yes, this is a group of powerful bitches, rather than, oh my god, why are they trying to upstage each other? Which brings me to number one. The number one worst is Congratulations from season 13. Where I'm That Bitch really showcased that all of these girls were confident and could win the crown, this felt like they were all desperate to claw each other and push each other down to get to that crown. I don't know if it's because of the way that the show was presenting this group of queens, but there was just such a level of arrogance with the song and the episode that I'm glad kind of went away after episode like four or something. Just here, it's hard to go back and listen to. Like I mentioned earlier, I think the beat of the song also brings down the whole vibe of it. I just think it's way too bass heavy, so all of the verses just kind of feel the same. It's hard for me to describe, but someone like Liv had a very different style to her verse, but everything sounded like everything else because the beat just, it didn't really allow for variation. What makes the song just feel so upstagey is the fact that all of the girls already showcased their talents in the first episode and quote unquote won, so this was like a victory lap for them to show that they were the best of the best, and it just felt like they were pushing each other out of the way to try and get there. So when someone like Liv holds a note at the end of her verse, it's like, hey guys, look, look what I can do, while someone like Rosé does the same thing, but it still like fits into her verse. It felt like every single one of them was trying to stand out too much, so there was no coherence with the group, and it just leads to, oh, a lot of cringe. At the end of Phenomenon, they all get a little ad lib, someone says like, phenomenon, non, non. While at the end of Congratulations, it's their one last chance to upstage each other. Like again, we see Liv holding a note, she sounds great, and then we see Candy also holding a note, which also sounds great, but it's like, why is Candy going right after Liv that's just upstaging? And then we get other people like Tina being like, oh, is something smoking? Uh, oh wait, that's just me. Like everyone is just so cocky and I get it, they just won their whole lip sync thing, but it just doesn't make a good song. A lot of lyrics on I'm That Bitch are like, oh, I'm the best, I'm gonna win. But a lot of lyrics on Congratulations are like, you're the worst, you're gonna lose. Like, it, it just feels so much more negative. I think a good bitch track shows a lot of confidence of a queen, but is still a little tongue in cheek. Like, they know they have the confidence and the talent to do this, but they're still in it with the audience. Here, aside from Simone, it just feels like all of them are taking it way too seriously and trying to prove to the judges that they have it, but it just comes off a little desperate and it doesn't translate that well in a group setting. And then you have the juxtaposition of Phenomenon next week with all the girls interacting and just having a good time. Everything just feels so segmented here, and I don't think that's the sign of a good song. Bing, bang, bong.
song, sing, sing song, ding, ding, dong. Coming in at the number one best, is it even a question? It's UK Hun from series two. Drag Race UK has this silly thing where they have one really great group and then one group that doesn't do as great. But I think here, both groups did very, very quality jobs. Again, like with Phenomenon, you can pick out iconic moments from every single one of these verses. And I go back and listen to these all the time. They take the Eurovision concept and the silly little beat and still flip it into something that's really branded towards themselves while meeting the criteria of the challenge. I mean, the song is just so dangerously catchy. Bing bang bong, sing sing song, ding dang dong. Like, come on. If Break Up Bye Bye set the bar, this jumped over the bar, over the moon, like, dear lord. And I think what helps the viewers have a very positive connotation with the song is the fact that the girls just came back. It's one of the most iconic episodes ever. There's just so much going for it that I absolutely adore. I could go on, but everyone has already talked about how great this song is, so I'm just gonna stop here. There are so many amazing mid-season songs, and I think they are just some of the most exciting things on Drag Race. It's just another win-win-win for everyone involved, and I think as the show continues to get massive, it's just such a great idea to keep the branding going. It's become a staple challenge, and I wouldn't want to have it any other way. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm really trying to get a deep dive out there, a really high quality long video. I love doing these quick bites, but it's not the be all end all of what I want to do. But school is just completely tearing me a new one right now. So over summer, I'm definitely going to get those videos out. But for right now, I just have to stick to these quick bites. I know you guys do enjoy them though, so I wouldn't do anything unless you guys enjoyed it. And I'm going to have a season 14 review come out before school ends. But by like end of May, that's when videos are going to really ramp up and I'm going to do a lot of stuff. Hope you guys understand. Thank you guys so much for all the support. Thanks again for 30k. This is fucking insane. I'll see you guys soon with another video.